Imagine a world where the musical landscape lacks the emotive voice of Linda Ronstadt. Does he love me? I wanna know. A titan in her time, Ronstadt dominated the charts and our hearts, but spent her later years enveloped in a shroud of solitude. Spend your time and enjoy yourself, but it's, it's getting harder. How did this musical powerhouse arrive at such a paradoxical endpoint? Today, we will unearth the untold stories and explore the highs and lows of a life filled with musical genius, amazing relationships, and unsung struggles. Early Life and Family Influences Born in July of 1946 in Tucson, Arizona, Linda Ronstadt was destined for a life that defied all odds. Her father, Gilbert, was not only a successful machinery company owner, but also a musician with immense talent. You could say that music was in her DNA, as her father also played a significant role in nurturing her early love for music. While most parents would discourage their children from chasing the uncertainties of a life of a musician, Gilbert did the exact opposite, gifting her his cherished Martin guitar as she set out for the City of Angels in 1965. And while he was thrilled by his daughter's local performances, the thought of her plunging into the professional chaos of the music industry in a big city had made him anxious. Was it paternal instinct sensing the dangers and hardships that came with life on the stage? We may never know, but what we do know is that Linda went against his apprehensions and made her way to Los Angeles with her guitar in hand and dreams in tow. At the age of 14, she already had a taste of what her future may look like. Alongside her siblings, she formed a folk trio, performing at venues that ranged from humble coffee houses to college fraternity houses. But was it enough for a young Linda? Her thirst for something more substantial had led her to yearn for a fusion of folk music and rock and roll, a blend that many would not dare to have dreamed of back then. This ambition was too large for the confines of her own hometown and even her academic institutions. And so, she dropped out of the University of Arizona to chase after her dreams full throttle in the sprawling city of Los Angeles. Once in LA, fate seemed to lend her a hand. She reunited with an old friend from Tucson named Bobby Kimmel. And what's fascinating is that Kimmel and his guitarist friend Kenny Edwards were in the process of developing their own folk music. She didn't only stumble upon an opportunity, she was the missing piece of their puzzle. And together, they formed the Stone Ponies, setting the stage for her catapult to stardom. Her Ascent with Stone Ponies The Stone Ponies marked a critical juncture in Linda's life, a crossroads where youthful aspiration intersected with the brutal reality of the music industry. Forming in 1966, the group had combined their diverse talents, with her as the charismatic frontwoman, Bobby on the bass, and Kenny on guitar. Los Angeles in the late 1960s was a hothouse of creativity, but it also saturated with musical talent that was competing for a breakthrough. It would take a unique blending of skill, luck, and timing to stand out in such an environment, and stand out they did. While the Stone Ponies initially struggled to gain traction, their perseverance would lead them to their first record deal with Capitol Records. The contract materialized not only as a magical wand that instantly transformed them into stars, but as a lesson in the harsh realities of the music business itself. The record company envisioned the Stone Ponies as a pure folk rock group and attempted to market them as such. But here we find Linda, an artist driven by the idea of blending folk music with rock elements, confined within the industry's rigid genre boundary. Was this frustrating for her? Well, undoubtedly. But as the old saying goes, you have to start somewhere, and she knew that this would be her stepping stone and her proving ground. In 1967, their debut album, simply titled The Stone Ponies, would be released, and it was a modest collection embodying folk tradition. But it didn't make a significant splash in the more large music scene. What it did do was provide a platform for Linda's own voice, a unique instrument in its own right, and that captivated the few who had the good fortune to hear it. You could say that this album was like a flickering candle in a dark room, barely noticeable, but essential as a starting point of light. It was their second album, Evergreen Volume 2, that acted like a lightning rod for their aspirations. It featured the hit single, Different Drum, penned by Michael Nesmith of The Monkees. Linda's soaring vocals on this track were like nothing ever heard before. Compelling, authentic, and deeply moving, the song shot up the charts, making it impossible to ignore the band any longer. Linda, the girl from Tucson with a dream and a guitar, 
had now become a bona fide star. Different Drum was more than just a hit, it became a musical statement that crystallized her individuality within the group and set the stage for her eventual solo career. As much as she had valued collaborations with the band, she was already feeling the constraints of a collective artistic endeavor. She yearned to explore musical vistas that went beyond the horizons that were visible to the Stone Ponies, and as the history books would later show, her intuition would be spot on. The group disbanded in 1968, making room for her ascent as a solo artist. Solo career and the pinnacle of success. With the dissolution of the band, the cocoon had broken, and Linda was now ready to soar. Her solo career began with her first album, Hand Sewn Homegrown, in 1969. And though it was not a commercial success, it showcased the blossoming versatility that would later become her hallmark. Linda was not one to be confined by a genre or a label, and her musical identity was as fluid as it was bold. The years that followed would be marked by a series of albums that climbed steadily higher on the charts, each one offering an eclectic blending of musical style. From folk to country to rock, she had taken each genre and imbued it with a personal touch. Her albums were not only compilations of songs, they were explorations of emotional landscapes, each track a sojourn into a different facet of the human experience. The first seismic shifting in her career came with the album Heart Like a Wheel in 1974. This was Linda unleashed, her vocal prowess finally given a platform that was worthy of its range and depth. It was a commercial and critical triumph, earning her a Grammy and propelling her into the mainstream consciousness. The hits You're No Good and When Will I Be Loved were more than just chart toppers, they were anthems, cultural touchstones that had captured the spirit of a generation. As if to prove that her success was no fluke, she continued to pump out a string of hit albums throughout the late 70s and 80s, which included Simple Dreams, Living in the USA, and Cry Like a Rainstorm, Howl Like the Wind. Each album seemed to unveil a new layer to her artistry, from the strains of country ballads to the rock and roll exuberance that filled arenas with adoring fans, it was not only her vocal talent that was captivating, it was also her instinctual grasp of the emotional core of each song that she had chosen to cover. Linda had the rare ability to take someone else's song and make it unforgettable as her own. She was not merely a singer, she was a cultural icon and a pioneer for women in the music industry. An ambassador of musical diversity, her influence would extend far beyond the records that she sold and the awards that she won. She had shattered ceilings and demolished barriers, both as a woman who was navigating a male-dominated industry and as an artist who refused to be pigeonholed into a genre. The Albums That Defined Her If one were to trace the trajectory of Linda Ronstadt's unparalleled career, it would undoubtedly pass through the constellation of albums that she's released. Each album is a world unto itself, a unique assemblage of songs and styles that showcase the breadth and depth of her artistry. From the earlier recordings to the multifaceted gems of her prime, these albums were not only products, they were statements and affirmations of an artist who was constantly evolving, yet always unmistakably herself. Heart Like a Wheel was her fifth studio album and came at a pivotal moment. Released in 1974, it was the one that launched her into stardom. The seamless blending of country, folk, and rock was a mixture that turned musical elements into gold. It produced hits that are now considered to be classics and earned her the first Grammy of her career. It was the one that announced her as a force to be reckoned with, not only as a singer, but as an interpreter of songs, able to take a tune and turn it into something profoundly personal. Simple Dreams in 1977 would be another milestone, showing Ronstadt in full command of her abilities, equally comfortable belting out rock anthems like It's So Easy as she was delivering soulful renditions of country classics. The album was more than just a commercial smash, it was a critical darling, reinforcing her reputation as a versatile and visionary artist. It held the number one spot on the charts for five consecutive weeks and went on to become one of the best-selling albums of the decade. The 80s would introduce another dimension to her musical repertoire. Albums like Mad Love reflected her willingness to experiment with new wave and punk influence, while What's New, her 1983 collection of American standards, would be a brave departure from the pop and rock landscape that she had conquered. The risk had paid off spectacularly, though. Opening doors to new audiences, 
while proving that her voice would enchant in any musical context. Cry Like a Rainstorm, Howl Like the Wind in 1989 was another triumph. Featuring collaborations with those like Aaron Neville, the album was a rich display of duets that spanned the gamut from pop to gospel. Critics and audiences alike would hail it as one of her most ambitious and accomplished works, showing her maturity as an artist and her relentless pursuit of musical exploration. The Power of Her Vocals If the albums were the physical markers of her expansive career, her voice would be the ethereal element that transformed each song into a magnetic sphere of influence. Unrestricted by genre and unfettered by musical dogma, her vocals transcended classifications to become something purely emotive, a raw force that connected directly with the soul of the listener. It was a voice that could express a universe of emotions, from the ecstatic joy of love to the heart-wrenching depths of sorrow, all within the span of a single note. Her vocals have often been described as powerful, yet the true power lay not in volume, but in nuance. She had a unique ability to find the core emotion of a song and bring it to the surface, whether it was the nostalgia imbued in a traditional folk tune, or the angst of a rock ballad, or even the yearning of a soulful R&B number. Her singing was interpretive in the deepest of sense, and she could venture into the lyrics and melody to extract something profoundly personal, turning each performance into an intimate confession or a shared celebration. This vocal prowess was honed through years of training and experience, but also a natural aptitude that seemed innate from her earliest days. Raised in a musical family where harmonies filled the home, she had absorbed a broad range of vocal traditions and styles, and by the time she began her professional career, her voice became an amalgamation of these influences, shaped further by her own unique sensibilities. It was as if she had a vast palette of vocal colors to paint with, allowing her to create intricate sonic portraits that had captured the complexities of human emotion. Another aspect of her vocal power would be her impeccable control. She could shift effortlessly from the tender softness of a lullaby to the blazing intensity of a rock anthem, never losing pitch or clarity. This level of mastery made her a versatile performer who could adapt to any musical setting, from intimate acoustic sessions to large-scale concerts backed by a full orchestra. Her voice, a finely tuned instrument that she played with the skill of a master musician, had matched her vocal phrasing to the nuances of each song's arrangement. Yet for all of its technical brilliance, the most remarkable feature of her voice was its ability to create an emotional resonance. When she sang, it felt as though she was bearing her soul, inviting listeners into her inner world with a sincerity that was disarming. Many have commented that her performances could bring them to tears or even uplift their spirits, regardless of the song's subject matter, and this was the true power of her vocals, the capacity to evoke emotion and stir the heart and to make each listener feel as though she were singing directly to them. Love and Relationships in the Limelight While Linda Ronstadt's music gave voice to a myriad of complexities in love and loss, her personal life mirrored these themes in ways that were equally as intricate and compelling. Amidst a rising career that left little room for privacy, she had managed to navigate the turbulent waters of relationships under the scrutiny of the public eye, a feat as challenging as any that she had faced professionally. Her romances often became fodder for tabloids and gossip columns, each speculated liaison dissected with voyeuristic fascination. Yet what became lost in these sensationalized accounts was the genuine emotion, the real human experiences that Linda herself had described as the raw material for her art. Her relationships were never mere dalliances, they were profound connections that influenced her music and in turn were influenced by it. Several of her relationships with men equally iconic in the world of music and film, from the charming Jim Morrison to George Lucas, and in each of these relationships she was not only a muse but an equal partner, bringing her own emotional and intellectual richness to the dynamic. It was as if their relationships served as another arena for her to explore the same themes that were prevalent within her music, the euphoria and agony of love, the complexities of human connection, and the perpetual quest for emotional honesty. That all being said, she was no damsel in distress simply waiting to be saved by love. She approached each relationship with the same independence and self-assurance that had characterized her professional career. Her public statements on love would often resonate with a sense of individuality, 
acknowledging that while a partner could enrich her life, her happiness was not dependent on romantic love. This philosophy extended to her decision to adopt and raise two children on her own, reflecting the understanding that family could be defined in a myriad of ways and not limited by the traditional norms. Yet the fame that brought her into the limelight had also cast a shadow on her personal life. Relationships in the public eye come with their own set of challenges, and the loss of privacy, the external judgments, and the ever-present speculation. For someone as inherently private as she was, this was a dichotomy that she had to manage in a careful way. It became a balancing act of guarding her emotional sanctity while also existing in a world that felt entitled to every detail of her personal affairs. The Loneliness of Stardom The glamour and adulation that comes with stardom will often mask the solitary journey it entails, and for Linda, the ascent to musical royalty was not without its personal costs. Despite a life that seemed to be perpetually surrounded by people, fans, reporters, fellow musicians, and more, there existed a parallel reality, one defined by the solitude that accompanies the weight of fame. As her career would skyrocket, the demands on her time and energy became increasingly onerous. Tours, interviews, recording sessions, and public appearances, they all ate into the hours and days, leaving little room for a personal life. The stage became a sanctuary of sorts, a place where she had connected with thousands, yet stood alone, spotlighted and separate. Even amidst the roaring applause in the ocean of faces, there was a type of isolation that only those who have stood in such a place can fully comprehend. This isolation extended into her offstage life as well. With fame came the erosion of anonymity, making simple activities like grocery shopping or dining out a production in their own right. Relationships became strained under the scrutiny of the public eye, and genuine connections became even more elusive. In an industry where alliances often had an agenda and friendship could be fickle, deciphering such authenticity became a daily exercise. And yet, it was this very loneliness that often fueled her art. Her songs of heartache, longing, and introspection were not only notes on a page, they were windows into her soul. With her music, she gave voice to the loneliness that many felt but could not articulate, and in doing so, found a communion with the masses. But it wasn't only the emotional aspect. The physical toll was significant as well. The exhaustive nature of touring had led to periods of illness and fatigue, amplified by the expectation to always be at her best. The artist who was a dynamo on stage was also a human being, vulnerable to the same physical and emotional wear and tear that affect us all. Yet the show had to go on, and so it did, sometimes at a significant personal cost. Health Struggles and Farewell to Music In a career studded with highs, the abrupt ending was a counterpoint that nobody could have seen coming. Linda Ronstadt, the queen of rock, the dynamo whose vocals had powered through decades of evolving musical scenes, had found her voice silenced by a force she could not control, Parkinson's disease. Diagnosed in 2012, the condition affected not only her motor function, but took a devastating toll on her singing ability and robbed her of the gift that had defined her existence and connected her to millions. It would not only be the halt of her singing career that shook her, it was the realization that the disease was incurable, progressive, and would affect every facet of her life. The rigors of touring, already a physically demanding endeavor, became unthinkable, and even the simple action of standing on a stage, much less performing for hours, was now fraught with difficulty. The larger-than-life persona was now wrestling with a very human vulnerability. The announcement of her diagnosis was met with a flood of public sympathy, but also an outpouring of tribute and accolades that seemed to crystallize her contributions to the musical world. Awards and honors would roll in, not as a swan song, but as a heartfelt acknowledgement of her obvious impact on music and culture. Her life had come full circle from the young girl who sang into a hairbrush to an icon who had moved people in ways that words could hardly capture. This chapter of her life was a strong contrast to the decades of frenetic activity and public adulation, yet it also offered her the space to reflect not only on her own life, but on the more wide musical landscape to which she had contributed so much. She found different avenues to engage with the world, writing, activism, and even mentoring. And if Parkinson's had stolen her voice, it was not going to touch her intellect or her passion. 
In this period of her life, she had displayed a courage that equaled any of her previous battles, be they with industry executives or societal expectation. Yet in interviews and public appearances during that time, she seemed at peace with the cards that she had been dealt. In losing her ability to sing, she found other aspects of life that filled her with joy and purpose. She engaged more deeply in activism, spending time with family, while reflecting on a life extraordinarily lived. It was a different sort of music that she composed in this period, one quieter but no less impactful. Her dignity, in the face of life-altering adversity, had added another layer to her already complex legacy. The Legacy She Left Behind When the stage lights dim and the crowds disperse, what remains is a legacy. An obvious imprint on music, culture, and countless hearts, her life was a multifaceted gem that reflected the complexities of fame, the beauty of artistic integrity, and the indeflatable human spirit. Her journey from the Arizona desert to the pinnacle of rock stardom was neither linear nor without its struggles, yet each chapter contributed to a legend that transcended the limitations of genre, time, and even her own voice. The legacy she left behind is one of monumental artistry, her voice has been immortalized in recordings that span from rock to pop to country, folk, and even opera, and the songs that she brought to life have themselves become cultural landmarks, inseparable from the moments that they enriched and the lives that they touched. Yet her impact goes far beyond the tunes that she sang. Her fearless approach to genre hopping broke down barriers and laid the groundwork for future artists to blend and transcend musical category. She demonstrated that artistry and commercial success could coexist, showing young artists that they could be both critically acclaimed and adored by fans. Equally important is her role as a female pioneer in a male-dominated industry. At a time when women were often relegated to the sideline or reduced to novelty acts, Linda commanded stages, headlines, and record contracts with a gusto that left no room for marginalization. She was a figure of empowerment long before the term ever became a staple of public discourse, and whether through her choices in music, her business decisions, or her willingness to speak out on issues that were close to her heart, she stood as an icon of independence and courage, serving as a role model for both women and men. Her later years would add another layer to her legacy, one of grace under pressure. The public struggle with Parkinson's disease revealed her not as a diminished star, but as a resilient human being, confronting an uncertain future with the same tenacity that had marked her entire career. Even as her physical voice had been taken from her, she found other ways to communicate, inspire, and contribute. She became an advocate for health awareness, a mentor to young artists, and an elder stateswoman in the music industry, maintaining a presence that would be felt even if it was no longer heard.